Hey, I'm Turner Vinson. Welcome to day four of my week of quarantine demonstrations from the yard. And today we're gonna paint a backlit tree. So this is day four of my week of quarantined demos from the yard. And if you haven't seen the other three days, I'll put a link up here. You can check them out. And I'll admit that this is not uh, the most exciting subject to paint. But uh, we've kind of done some of the, the distant scenes. Um, I really like some of these scenes of the sapphires, which I mentioned yesterday. But uh, they're better with evening light, and it's morning right now. So this tree, uh, it's a nice shape. I think it's just kind of a nice challenge. And uh, we'll see what we can do with it. And today we're working on a 12 by 16 canvas panel. And it was used in a workshop for a demo. And after the workshop was over, I didn't see use in keeping it, so I scraped it down and it will live to see another day. So it will be a little confusing at first, but as I block in some of the big shapes, uh, it'll take care of some of the confusing elements. So I'm squinting, looking at my scene. You'll, if you've watched these other demos, you'll hear me talking about squinting constantly. And the way I'm gonna compose this is kind of a higher horizon line composition. And some of these distant, um, distant mountains are gonna come through about the top third. So distant mountains here, which is gonna put my tree kind of here with this big shadow coming down. So let's get a dark, a dark suggestion in there. I'm just going with kind of a dark, a dark green with uh, my ultramarine, a uh, dirty palette and some yellow. And I want those distant mountains here. My, the bottom of my tree is going to be about here, and that shadow, something, something like that, and then the top of the tree comes out. It's got this lean, it's got this bend to it, something like that. And right here is my neighbor's house. I'm just gonna omit, omit the house, Apple Z, <laughs> uh, and bring in these distant mountains. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna throw the sky in there and uh, I think we'll be able to make a little more sense of what's going on. The sky is hazy, it's morning. Uh, it's not super saturated blue. So I'm going with a light, warm tone. But I don't, I'm not gonna paint the whole thing with that. I'm gonna shift it a little bit. Something like that. All right, and we're gonna look at these distant mountains. We got some kids playing in the yard, but that's what uh, quarantine demos from the yard is all about. And I'm pushing these mountains a little more purple. Uh, they're not so much purple, but as I'm squinting, they're a hazy, distant color, and that's where you kind of, you can push them bluish or purplish and I'm gonna see what happens pushing them purplish. Sure, let's just, I know my light, I'm gonna lose this shadow and everything pretty quickly. So I'm trying to get some things in there pretty quick, which is how I like to work anyways. Um, I would recommend challenging yourself to work quickly um, just as exercise as practice all right I'm gonna go for the green lit grass I'm squinting we've had some nice warm weather and everyone's yards are attempting to be green coming all the way into the base of this tree I'm gonna saturate that a little more
tree base is going to be right around there, kind of shooting to the side. Alright. And then some of this grass is more brown and patches. Suggest it some of that. Carving out some of this shape. <laughs> you still in your jammies, buddy? Throw a little bit of turp in here, cover up an area. And sometimes it's kind of cool working on these other old canvases that, that leave leave interesting colors poking through sometimes but make sure what you know when you do things like that that are kind of accidental or happen kind of naturally make sure they're benefiting benefiting the painting and not confusing the painting and for me I think that uh, I love hearing feedback from people particularly people who maybe aren't aren't super familiar with artwork or painting and because they they will call it as they see it not even knowing it like not even realizing it but they'll say things like so what's that what's that area right there supposed to be and i value those type of comments because that means that probably the general public is not going to know what that is it's confusing to it's confusing to that person. They're probably not the only person in the world that that area is gonna be confusing to. Okay, squinting, it does feel like some backlit tree, so that's good. Let's, um, I'm gonna work back here a little bit, kind of building up to, to working on this tree. And I'm gonna suggest some of these trees coming up and I'm gonna, make sure they feel pretty distant. Going with some blues, a little bit of yellows. And they come up over this plane, so I wanna make sure I do that. Do one that's a little darker. See if that, see if we can get away with something like that. It might feel a little too simple, but we'll come back to it. While I'm back there, there's, their shadows are kind of coming, coming this way. It could be a nice, nice element. And that'll be nice when we when we kind of cool this off and work on this shadow. It'll have some nice cool tones in it. All right, I'm gonna move move into the tree. Um, some of this green is coming through here, carving out branches and whatnot. And then there's a house, as I mentioned, right here, but it's carving out a lot of negative shapes. So I'm gonna still study those shapes, but I'm gonna carve them out with these distant, distant mountains instead. And this shadow starts a little higher. All right, let's find a shadow. I'm squinting. It's squinting at the shadow. Hmm. Let's see. Don't want it super saturated. 
can it's going to shift around it's kind of a purplish but that shadow starts up higher okay and then there's going to be branches let's do those now So some of the elements of this tree that are so nice are these wide, wide branches, especially this one that's coming out this way. Let's see. Go make sure it's dark enough. And it reaches out all the way to here. Over here, these branches come lower. So comparing, that branch is this far up the trunk. These branches are really low. whole tree I can tell is going to be widening we'll be getting fatter which I think will be a good thing and the bend the bend of this tree is what is gonna if <laughs> if this painting has any interest and success in it it's gonna be the bend the bend of this tree of course the whole the whole shadow coming towards us is interesting, but if this tree was just stationary, flat, straight, soldier, you know, uh, some like soldier position at attention, I don't think it would be as interesting. But I love this bend in it, and so I want to make sure I get that, which will come from the sky holes that are poking through, kind of giving you some of the, the idea of the shapes in there. And I think I will, as it is here, just going right off the top. It's going to be, the whole painting is going to be really about this, this area here, I think. And uh, I think that's pretty interesting. It's kind of a, I think it's an interesting composition. That's, the sky and my, the sky wouldn't be that low. It would be uh, looking through the, through the mountains. Squinting, squinting. Uh, as I'm editing these videos, I keep getting self-conscious about how often I'm saying squinting. But I'm trying to vocalize every thought that's coming through my mind as I'm painting. And when I squint, I think I want to, I want to let you know that I'm squinting because of how, how important it is in judging, in judging what you're doing. And I'll squint, squint, and I'm looking at the scene. I'm squinting and looking at my canvas. I'm going back and forth, trying to give it the same, the same feeling in my canvas that I'm seeing in real life. This shadow still seems like it's going to come wider, which I think is still going to be nice. And as the sun is shifting, this shadow is shifting out that way a little more, which I'm okay with. So within the shadow, there is dead grass, there's little clumps of grass, and it's kind of a, some of it's really warm, not that warm, and it is pushing more in the purple than the reddish. Um, so I'm gonna hint at some of the, some of the varieties that are happening within there.
this was kind of like a, a spot of light coming through. But I'm gonna I wanna address oops, I wanna address the whole shadow and then come back and, and decide where my where the light holes are gonna be that are coming through. Still widen this thing out a little bit. Just with some turp, I'm gonna cover up this this old painting that's poking through. I think this old painting poking through is helping me more than I was expecting. I'm going for a dark, a dark green in some of this shadow closest to me. I think you can go darker with a bigger brush. Bigger brush, more paint. Yeah, I think it's getting too light in some areas and I don't want don't want that. Squinting, stepping back. This lighter, lighter tone is still throwing it off. And that's just telling me that these, the, the, the shifts and the changes that I'm gonna make within the shadow are gonna have to be really subtle. Or it's just, and that's what's happening. They're, I'm squinting at that shadow shape right now and it just all goes into one. The, the little clumps of grass, they are almost unnoticeable while I'm squinting. That's, why, that's the importance of squinting. And so as I'm doing that to my, as I'm, suggesting those little shifts on my canvas, I need to do it and be able to squint and them almost disappear. Let's get a dark, a dark green. Darker. And let's, uh, Let's see how far, okay, so this branch is gonna come all the way out to here, which means these branches are just not quite as far out and they swoop down. The branches here here, and then the top shoots right off. It's kind of cool. I'm gonna use this, you know, little bit of a bigger brush right now. And then as I like the overall shape, come back with a smaller brush. So there's another tree behind this, and I'm, I'm just going to exclude that. I don't think it's gonna help. Okay, trunk is here. This should stretch all the way out, I think, to like here. Something like that. And this area is where the most light is hitting the tree but I'm going, I'm gonna keep it dark for now. Come back with the light. Kind of swoops down into here. And this is the, the lowest. Yeah, cool. All right, I'm standing back, maybe 10, 10 feet or so squinting. The shadow is driving me nuts, but I don't, I don't wanna mess with it right now. Um, it's just, it's too, it's too, it's the wrong shape. It's just kind of boring. Um, but I, I want to stay in the tree for a little bit longer and then we'll come back. Then we'll come back to it. Okay. Let's go for the light, the light in the tree squinting. I'm going to squint 
and paint the light that I see while I'm squinting. And this is a cad yellow light with, you know, there's just a bunch of dirty paint in that cad yellow already. I'm just touching some of my blues. And let, let's, I need to differentiate it from the ground and it's cooler. It's cooler and it's, hmm, it's, I think it's darker than the light on the ground. So I think that the light in the tree is cooler and needs to be a little darker than this. And maybe there could be some areas of highlight that are lighter, but I think overall the light in the trees needs to be darker. I'll start with this. I think it's getting too, too light still. This is uh, cooler and darker highlights over here. Backlit stuff can be can be a little tricky sometimes. You just have to make sure you have the darks darks in there and I do not speak as a master on the topic but you can go look at Dan Marshall's work the watercolors oh my gosh like everything he does is backlit and amazing go check out his work and he's a tattoo artist in Denver I like that direction I think it will be really nice to add some highlights in areas but first, I want to um, not do that. First, I want to work on some of the branches because the branch, there's a lot of nice branches going through there that have some nice uh, light colored, warm branches that are being lit. And I think that's gonna help a lot. It's gonna be really nice. So I'm gonna mix a couple of branch colors using a burnt umber, my yellow ochre. You know, it, sometimes it's hard for me to say exactly how I'm mixing because it's like, dip, 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 dip. <laughs> you know, you like, you take across all these colors. And I, I think I'm doing that because I'm, I'm looking for a more muted color than something super bold. Um, and let's see how this looks. This might be a little light for now. It's also it's really warm. They're touching my orange and my matter lake, which is very dirty. Try to warm it up a little bit. All right, this, there's a branch right here that's kind of coming at us. It has a nice highlight on it. I'm gonna be able to pump that up a lot, but Right now, I'll keep skirting around. Just branch in there. Following the trunk up. There's a branch up in here. Here. Yeah, it's nice. Now I'm gonna work right back into that with the sky and uh, give some of those shapes, some of those sky shapes in there. Just looking around. Squinting and thinking what's the most important, important sky shapes. Right around here somewhere, there's one that's a little bigger. I think I want to, I want to darken my, my sky shapes in there. Not let them be so, so contrasty in here. But there's kind of a bigger sky hole in 
here somewhere. Squinting, remembering where this line of trees is coming through. Around here somewhere. You know, and this is a this is the kind of thing where you decide how many sky holes is necessary for this painting. Um, and that's just absolute personal preference. You know, there's people who can paint every single branch and the painting, every single sky hole as well, and the painting doesn't feel overworked. Like the, the master of that is the Russian painter uh, Shishkin. You should Google his work and see his interior, interior forest scenes that just are outstanding. They're amazing. And he painted so much detail, but it, the painting doesn't feel overworked. That's mastery of your skill. And of course, I'm not, um, I'm not going for the level of realism that Shishkin was doing, but you know, for myself, I'm thinking you still have to ask yourself the same questions. Um, well, I don't know what his questions were. I guess his questions were, how many branches can I paint? But um, for me, it's kind of a dance. How much is needed? How much is not needed? How much do I want to push this? How much can I get away with? Etc. All right, I just did something that really threw off the the gesture of the tree that I liked. So. Make sure we try to get that back. Sometimes it's just obscuring, obscuring a few things. It's, I'm, I'm liking that quite a bit. This highlight here is not working. It's, uh, it's just kind of distracting. I'm gonna get rid of it and then might bring it back. Squinting, and I want to bring in some darker tones in this tree. I'm getting some ultramarine blue, dipping into my cad yellow light, a little purple, shifted a little bit. I like that, I like that level of saturation and dark value. It's nice. It just help mass in some of these areas of uh, of the dark side of the tree. And those are the like I was saying a second ago. Those are the that value change within the tree is what's going to help it feel like a backlit, backlit tree. It's nice, I think. All right, there's some branches right here that are kind of low hanging out. I want to suggest those. I like, when I'm squinting, I like the silhouette. I like the shape of the tree and all that's happening in it. Um, so those, when I'm squinting, I'm thinking, my my shapes were still too simple. What can I do to try to replicate what's happening in nature a little more? But those are too similar. You see, I mean, it's not happening in nature, but I just made them similar and they're not. So I'm going to shift that one a little bit and then maybe add something in between them it's better i think i'm gonna make this one a little bigger i think i'm gonna push that really dark here so you can see it off the background highlights on it.
trying not to go overboard with the highlights. Just see, see what we can do. I'm squinting, I'm still feeling like some of the masses of the darks in the trees are still getting broken up a little more than I want. So I'm gonna come back with my dark and just block in, so kind of solidify some of those shapes back, back together. Stepping back, I think that helps. I'm gonna address this area here and then a few more, uh, well, I, I've kind of lost the highlights on my branches and a few of the sky holes I think that will be helpful. Address those and I think we'll move down to the, to the shadow. I can get some sky holes in here and they're kind of following right along with the shape of the branch that I want to put in there. I wish you guys could uh, interact with me right now, like talk back to me because I'm thinking I really need someone to ask a question right now so I know what to talk about. I'm standing here in my yard by myself, it's kind of a funny thing. I guess I could get my kids over here <laughs> to ask me questions. Or I could get my wife, but I'm kind of intimidated with my wife and Art. She's She's my, um, she's my critique. She's my person that tells me straight up and I, it's more valuable than I can even say um, that she has the knowledge, she has the experience, and she has the eye to tell me what's working and what's not working. And it's, I mean, I, I'm interested in, in pushing myself forward as much as possible. And I want the critique. I don't want, you know, I don't just need praise. I mean, I get plenty of praise, thankfully, from my supportive family, parents, my grandparents, um, and which I'm not downplaying, by the way. I'm not downplaying people who are listening, parents, grandmothers. Um, but I want to be I want to continue pushing forward, and Tasha gives me that that critique that you need when you come in with a painting that you think, "Yeah, this is awesome." She's like, "Yeah, hmm. I think you need to do this and that." I did a uh, a portrait commission recently for for someone's wedding, and uh, she'd come look at it and she'd say. Are you done? <laughs> You're not done with that, right? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 of course not. What, what do you think needs to be worked on? And so I definitely encourage folks to find someone like that for themselves. Um, because if, if the people you're getting feedback are only telling you how great your paintings are, you gotta find some more feedback. I mean, you, you have to if you want to if you want to move forward. Um, and you know, it always, it always depends on what your goals are. Do you want to just be, you know, have fun, have fun with some oils? Then, yeah, you know, then let that be all you're going for. No problem, no, no issue with that whatsoever. But if you want to really push yourself, which I think a lot of people do, then find someone who can really tell you, honestly, that you're not gonna react to in a bad way, um, and that you can listen, that you can consider what they're telling you. It's the most important thing when you find a teacher 
is that you find a teacher that you respect. Because if you don't respect your teacher to begin with, when they tell you things, oh, you know, that needs to be darker, that needs to be lighter, this isn't working, or that's not working. If you don't respect that teacher, them telling you those things means absolutely nothing. And uh, it's amazing the number of people that take workshops that don't, that don't want the advice. And I don't know if that's just personal struggles with kind of authority or, or uh, you know, being humble enough to, be, to really learn, to be taught, or if it's that they don't think that the instructor is right to begin with. So don't be that person. I'm just, I'm squinting, I keep seeing this, and it's just not, I'm not enjoying the shape of that, what's happening over here, so I keep just kind of fiddling with it, trying to find what will make it a little more pleasing. I think it helps a little bit, whatever I just did. Put a couple of dark, darks over there. Okay, now I'm going to go for some dark branches and then find some lighter ones. And I'm mixing all of my darks. So I have black on my palette, but honestly it's, it's rare that I have black on my palette. And so when I'm going for a dark, like a super dark right now, I'm, I'm not necessarily going for the black. Occasionally in the a few spots I'll use black, but... Black's one of those colors that you just have to be cautious with, like like the phthalo or some of these really strong colors that a little bit goes a long ways. Squinting and just looking at a few areas, both in the tree in real life, and then looking at where those might those might be helpful in my painting. Yeah, it's really starting, those darks and the branches are helping kind of bring, bring some form into the, into the tree. As always, you don't want to overdo it. Okay, I'm going to get my smaller brush and look at just some subtle hints of highlight. I'm going to make these branch highlights a little more chromatic, a little more saturated. I got some cad orange, kind of mixed into the color I already had that was uh, my tree, tree branch color. That's gonna need a little, a little adjusting. I think, it's a, I think it's just a little too much. It might be some of these other other things that are throwing it off for me, but I'm just not crazy. I'm not crazy about all that. Squinting. Yeah, I'm, I think it's starting to feel pretty nice. Yeah, let's work. Uh, this is an area that keeps catching my eye in shadow that I'm I'm really not happy with. So, let's go straight to that. Let's see if we can find find a solution. One thing that's happening, and that I'm sure was happening earlier. I wish I could look back at the video, but I'm not I'm not going to do that. Solve this. Solve it the way I would normally solve it. Is that the shadow? and the darks of the trees combined. I mean, they, they touch, and I have them separated. So let's connect them and see. And they're, they're very, very similar right where they meet. So let's connect them and see what happens. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know. Might might help. I'm just kind of looking at how this edge, what happens on this edge right now. It comes out. It shoots back in right here. Comes out. I think some of that is already going to help, regardless of which direction this goes. It's just kind of referencing or working on that edge. There's some kind of purplish light, uh, light color. It's in the light, it's kind of dirt. Reference some of that. Right now, yeah, I think this could use a real pop of value in here coming out. And I'm gonna go with a nice, nice amount of white some yellow ochre, and I'm, I'm on top of this green pile. Squinting, knowing that it's nowhere near the value of the sky, which is where I'm at right now. So we know that's way too light. Mixing some other things in, I think, yeah, I think something like that, yeah. That would be really nice. So, nice. Dance it around through here a little bit. Yeah, that really helps. It's That is helping what I'm seeing. It's helping create the contrast that I'm seeing. shift it a little bit just deeper into this green pile and bring some of it through here and I'm, I'm still just uncertain of where I want the shape to go but let's see if it should go over this way I don't know I kind of like it coming towards me and that's definitely where it was in the beginning See if bringing this back in a little shift the shadow back towards me. Helps a lot, but this overall shape of the shadow is still not satisfactory. highlights just right around in here. I like what we did in connecting the dark of the tree down into the shadow. But a few of these highlights under there I think will help. And then I think going back over some of this with a couple of caught spots of the tree will just help remind you that that's there's a tree over the top of it. Yeah, stepping back, squinting, it's helping. It's helping a lot. And the, I think we're finding, we're finding something in the tree that's a little more pleasing. edge is just not, not 
not working. Still a little back of the brush scrub. Sometimes just a little scrape here and there can kind of solve a solve a problem for you. Not always though. Let's address a few of the the highlights within it and maybe that'll help help make some more decisions. So I'm going with uh, this kind of tree tree branch color I mixed earlier because I don't want I don't want to go with that bright of a value within here it might be a little too harsh um, so I'm gonna go with a darker value and see if we can pull a few highlights out so this this land kind of goes up goes up to that tree and I'm wondering if I can suggest that that kind of motion going up to it might help. And there's a shape here. Let's see. Don't want to overdo it. I just want to just hint at a few. certain of some of those. Maybe one around around here somewhere and I might might call that good enough on the I don't, I don't know. They're kinda they kinda fan right here, which I like I like the motion of it, but they're a little too they're kind of a little too Manufactured or something. Um, just gonna let a little brush dance around for a second and see if I can shift, get some variety in there. better it's better and as I'm squinting looking at the painting I'm liking a lot of what's going on but I keep bouncing over here to this tree and I don't I think it's more of a distracting element than uh, than helping I'm not saying I, I can't use a tree over there I just can't use it the way that it is right now so I'm going to say goodbye to it for now and determine what we could do all right let's uh let's address this kind of mountain ridge see if I can put a, it's kind of got some trees on it and just go with a really light blue across the top of it kind of around could be nice Maybe even bringing one down there's these you know these kind of foothills they kind of fold fold into each other I'm gonna go 
it just a little darker. Bring it across. I think that helps. It helps a lot. Back here, there's just some some of these angles. Which are a little bit. I had it earlier. But there's a kind of a distant field back here. I'm gonna go with a little bit lighter value back there, but not let it jump up too much. Kind of exploring, exploring some options. I think you know I pretty much eliminated those trees now, um, and I think that when I'm squinting down, I no longer am just going right over there to that to that side. So that might be that might be a good decision. I think that I think that helps. I do think there could still be, I kind of been putting it in and taking it out, um, could be just a, a variation back there. I just, I'm not doing it subtle enough. Maybe something like that can work. Stepping back. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool little study of this tree. I um, I like where it's I like where it's going. I think just to find a variation on in this line, this shadow line, and I will be happy to call this little sketch done. And that cooler value that I just did is is kind of nice. Let's see if I can. Push that around in a few places. Maybe just a few cooler notes closer. Okay, and the last thing I want to do is give this guy a little bit more of a gradation. I like, I like this color and value here, but I'm going to darken the top and gradate it down just a little bit. I think that's going to make this pretty nice. This is my, my celestial, like cerulean, and I'm dipping into my phthalo just, just a touch. Tasha's coming. We'll get her to give us the critique. We'll keep the camera rolling. All right, let me know what you think. The only thing that could be helpful is like, there's no sense of like a horizon line or like an edge. You can get more of that hill. I think it could be cool. 
I don't know. I'm just... The horizon is bothering me, wherever it is. Yeah. All right. See, I told you. Good advice every time. So if I translate correctly, which what she is suggesting is to make sure I get this this hill coming up, um, and that it might it's just maybe being not not defined enough. Um, so without just asking her to do it for me, let's see if we can do it. I do, maybe, I, you know, I have to say, I was working on that, right? This was an area I was, I didn't like and kept adjusting it, trying to find what it was. And then she comes over here and she spots it immediately. <laughs> Let's see. As I'm doing that, this, the light in this area is, it was getting distract was was playing with that background line. I think that's helping. I'm uh, I'm not gonna ask her to come back and give me permission to stop, but I do think that firming up some of this. It's helpful. I'm trying to pull that back into the right family. It's it's a little too blue and the rest of that's that nice chromatic green. Yeah. And just maybe a few touches few touches at the top of this tree this line this line is too too simple it's not doing that in real life um, so I think a couple of touches to give it a little more randomness be nice that helps okay my wife came back for another critique and she told me if I wanted to knock it out of the park that I need some bright stronger spots of highlights of light hitting in the shadow just a few spots not too much she said and I think she's right so let's try it the brush is a little too big So I'm using like a splayed out, like not very nice, round, maybe number, maybe like a number one or two round. And it's, uh, let's see what happens. What's funny about the two critiques she gave me, the two things that she mentioned were the hillside and the light in the shadow. And the two things that I was most careful with was like finagling with this background and then I was super careful in here. And like she walked up and spotted those two things immediately. And um, so I want to I wanna just put a few spots in there, a few confident spots in there, and we'll see what happens. And it, it's probably beneficial that I have a lighter value as well. I mean, a, a darker value already in there. Well, shoot, man. I think that's pretty nice. So if you're not married, find a spouse that can give you sound critiques. I think it could use some more, probably, but I don't I don't want to overdo it. I'm stepping back 
I do think that helps quite a bit. I'm gonna make this one a little, have a, a little wider spot over here. Yeah, I think that helps a lot. Thank you, dearest wife. <laughs>